Welcome back to my channel. One of you commented on one of my posts saying that you think that I should make a... Predictions. Predictions of what's going to happen at the CrossFit Games, who's going to win. So I decided that we were going to do top five. Top five women, top five men, and Ross is going to do his top five women and top five men. A whip beef! A whip beef! Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> this, this is going to be mainly a little bit of guesswork. When he says a little bit, the whole thing is guesswork. If you guys have an idea, do put it down in the comments below. I'd be really interested to see what you guys think too. Um, so without further ado, let's just get into the video. So should we do the women first? Okay. A few interesting things to know about the women's competition this year is that there's quite a lot of people not going to oh, the CrossFit. Don't look at my list. There's quite a few people not going to the CrossFit Games for the women. So you've got three of the top five from last year. You've got Tia Claire Toomey, Mal O'Brien and Brooke Wells. Uh, they all came in the top five last year. Anyone else who's not going? Danny Spiegel, Jacqueline Dahlstrom, yeah. Hayley Adams. Hayley Adams. Loads of people who usually are like within the top 10 at, at the end are not going. I think they've all like won or come close to like winning events. So there's lots of people that score big in events aren't going to be there this year. So that then it opens up all of their positions for other people to take points from events that those types of athletes would have won yeah. before. Like Danny Spiegel won last year that insane um, oh, sandbag. sandbag and Jacqueline Dahlstrom came second in that I think. Is that last year or the year before? That remember. was either last year or the year before. Yeah. Hayley Adams is like the one you look at for anything with toaster bar or GHDs or any sort of like endurance stuff because apparently she's just got the craziest engine. Yeah. So it's just all open and Tia's not there and she's just the best so. <laughs> and Brooke's like an OG. Like, yeah and Brooke Wells. Like just across the board like steady consistent person. Her sister's yeah. going this year though. Yeah. Sydney. The first first year of the game so. So should we, do you want to just go straight in and you give me your number five and then I'll yeah. give you my number five? Uh, Gabby Magala. Oh okay cool. What's yours? Uh, oh yeah, uh, I have gone for Annie, Annie Thoris' daughter oh, okay. in fifth place because I don't think, I think Annie smashed it. Is it last year or the year before? The year before year last. Before. The year before last. She came back, she'd had a baby, she came third. I don't think you can count her out. I don't think she'll be able to get close enough this year. But she like was right up there in the semi-finals. Yeah. I, th I think she could really, really give it a go and I think she'll come in the top five. So I went for Annie. Nice. Uh, I just went for Gabby because she trains with Laura Horvath. Laura Horvath is an absolute unit. Mm. And I just think she's a good like all-round crossfire. Mm -hmm. And she could probably get top five, I reckon, if she tried cool. really hard. So who have you gone for in fourth place? Emma Carey. Emma Carey. Yeah. I went for Alex Gazan. Oh. Um, don't really know that much. <laughs> took a stab in the She bar. smashed it in the semi-finals, and I'm just I'm on the I'm riding the wave of the people who smashed it in the semi-finals. Other people who are going to smash it. I've just got guess. huge hype. Loads of people will be like, oh, they burnt themselves out in the semi-finals, but I'm just I'm hyping the semi-final winners and top scorers all the way to the game. I'm going to say they turned up at the semis. They're probably just training through it as well, and they smashed everyone. So. She finished at the top, I think, of one of the American ones, so I've gone with her. I went with Emma Carey because it's her second year at the actual games, and before oh, yeah. she was as she was a like a youth, sixteen to seventeen, and she won that. And she's <laughs> actually like incredibly strong. That snatches ninety, you know, it's like one ten, one ten. Sounds 15. like you've done some research. Literally five minutes ago. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I've seen her like on Instagram and stuff, and she just looks like a little pocket rocket. So. Right. Cool. Three, oh, Annie Forrester. Oh, you went for Annie? Yeah. Oh, okay. I really believe that she'll do it. I just, I think that she's, she's one of those people that just knows what you have to do. And I think that she's, like, she, I always think she's so inspiring because she always does it for her little girl. And like, if it's really emotional, like her husband's in the stand and stuff. I just, I, I like team Annie. I want Annie to do really well. I put Gabby Magala down as that. No, one. so we literally swapped those around. Yeah. But I, I want Annie to smash it. I just I just think the other the other ladies that are going are just unreal. Okay, what about second silver medal? I'm gonna say at the same. same time. Okay, three, two, two one, one. Daniel, Daniel Brandon. Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> That's just because we both have a crush on Daniel Brandon, so She's just she's just cool. Isn't she's she? cool, yeah. And she's... we've been watching her on YouTube at like the rad tapes. Mm. She says she's ready. I believe that she's ready. She's a unit and she's good at CrossFit. Yeah. And she also doesn't really give a damn when when the judges like give her bad calls 
she gets mad, she has a go at the judges, she gets angry at events like she doesn't do very well. Yeah. I think she's really relatable. She's so relatable and she's just, she's a cool, she's a cool gal. She's very cool, tattoos and... Tattoos and cool hair and just, yeah. I feel like she gives me the vibes of like, I don't give a monkey's chuff back. She's just like so herself, she's, yeah, she's cool. It is cool. And I would love, love, love for her. To be on the podium. Well, I wanted to put her first, and then okay, do we're going to say our yeah. first place, and it's okay. going to be the same. And we know that I think she's going to be pretty unstoppable. Three, two, one. Nora Hall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I do just think she's just going to be. Uh, well, I think Laura Allbarth is a machine. Yeah, she's just built just like a. I mean, we were re-watching the CrossFit Open, and she kept up with the men for pretty much the whole workout. 23.1. 23.1. And she, I just, she's got, she's just unbelievably strong, built like a tank, an mm. unbelievable engine. I just think there's nothing to stop her this year. And I think that she knows that without Tia, without Mal, without all of these other people, that she can win events or like come closer to the top and can be like really consistent. I honestly against. think she's going to be right up there for every event. I don't, I don't really, there's only, they've only released a few events that we know of, but you know, there's going to be a heavy snatch and cleaner jerk and she's so, so strong. strong. I think it's going to be tight between yeah. the two of them, but I just think Laura is just an absolute animal yeah. and she's just going to run away with it. Yeah, I agree. So we agree on our top two. Yeah. There's also like to mention some other people who are going to be there that are going to make it difficult. Emma Dawson as so well, she's really good. Who's that girl that you, was, that you said about? Amanda yeah. Barnhart. Amanda Barnhart. Insanely strong. And power Like power teams like 110. Teams, like 110. Is there an echo in here? Um, Ellie Turner, you said before we started recording, yeah. she's a bit of a beast. They're all pretty awesome across it, but I think that some other those other names as well are quite mentionable. Um, so there's going to be some some hard competition. I, I think those first two places are going to be pretty much yeah. set. I I would place like a pretty substantial mm. bet on that. I think from third down is from third to like seventh or eighth. It's, it's going to be like a bit of a free for all. Yeah. To be honest. What I'm interested in is obviously, obviously now that they're saying they have like these cuts, I, I understand why they're doing it and I understand the principle behind it, but I also think that you have athletes who sometimes the way that the the CrossFit Games is programmed, like sometimes the, the workouts that they're doing just aren't their strength at first mm. and then they come into their own towards the end of it. I think it's a real shame to count people out towards the beginning just because, you know, you need people to watch more or like people don't have time to go around the stands or whatever. Mm. I think it's a shame. I think you're right. But it will be interesting to see what happens, but I do think it's I think a shame. Why, why take the top 50 and 50 men and 50, I mean, just take the top 30, 30 men and then let them just all have it out yeah. and, and go crazy. We were just saying before this, I just read on Instagram that apparently the CrossFit Games isn't going to be in Madison next year. It's not going to be in Birmingham, Alabama, like they said it might be after this year going forward. And they said that they want to take CrossFit like around the world, so it might be yeah. somewhere else. Which I'm all for, by the way, I think it'll be amazing. Yeah, around the world. And I just think, just let, don't cut people, just... Just let them, I also feel like it's so unfair, people will train a whole year to get mm. to the CrossFit Games, and then you can't even do the full week. Yeah. You know? It's just not fair, because... Think about someone like Patrick Vellner, who does terribly in event one, historically does awful in event one and has to claw his way back up. I know that's the nature of the beast. Like if you mess it up, you mess it up, it's game over. But but usually it's not game over. He's usually like it's... podium finisher yeah. consistently. So if you just cut him out when you know that he's going to crawl his way back up and like really make it hard for everybody else who's did well in the first event and he's just going to knock him back one by one and then all of a sudden what he just gets cut and it's game over. Yeah, sad. Yeah, you know, I just don't think it's right because yeah. especially if you, if you got people who've won semi-finals and they're really good at CrossFit and they just like trip on the first two events yeah. and then all of a sudden they're way down the list. Be a bit of savage from that. So that's our opinion on that. Right, club five men, ready? Oh, well, should we just talk about the men? Oh, well, I don't really know much to talk about with the men, apart from Ricky Garrard's not gonna be there. Ricky Garrard hurt himself on his bike. I don't know much about the guy who qualified from the African semi-finals, but he's been popped. 
for loads of gear. So he's not going to go. Um, I don't even know if he was like really, really good or not. I don't even know who he is. They put out the invite to the guy who came second and now he can't go. And I think it's a really sad story. Yeah. It's, so that is sad. Guillermo Majoros not going. Oh, yeah. And he would have absolutely annihilated every single man there snatching Pina Joe. Oh yeah, the total. Yeah. So they have to do a weightlift in total, don't they? Um, and he was top 10, I think, last year. He was really strong. He was, yeah. Good. He didn't make it though, did he this year? No, he, he didn't qualify. Make it. If we just go straight in, who do you think, who have you put in your fifth place? So I don't actually know many of the men. So my number five is someone I don't even know who I just thought <laughs> would just take a stab in the dark because I thought, oh, why no? Uh, Fabien Benito. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> is, he, is he Spanish? Yeah. Is he the Spanish guy that qualified? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's quite cool because I saw him qualify at the European semi final. Okay. I think, did he, did he come 10th or something at the European semi final? I just um, saw it and I thought, oh, I'm gonna. And he was the fittest in Spain in 2020, yeah. 2021, 2022, and 2023. We live in Spain. So I've gone for in fifth place. Uh, I've, I'm going European and I'm saying Lazar Jukic. Um, he came eighth last year. And, you know, you just never know. He's super fit. I've seen him on Instagram, you know, doing this and that. I know he had a really good performance at the semi finals. All I've got to say in response to that is I put him in my number four. So. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think he's cool. I think he's cool. So yeah. I put him as my number five. Nice. I think he's going to finish top five, so you're number four, and you just said... Lazar Jukic, who's yeah. your number four then? Don't look at my list. Don't kick off about me looking at your list and then have a cheeky look at mine. <laughs> I'm not looking at your list. Do you think this list. is? You just did this. <laughs> uh, I put Jeff Adler, who's Canadian, who came fifth last year, who is so, he's so strong. Like, he's really strong. I remember, I think it was last year, they had like the, I think it was like running and then jerks. Oh yeah, they had to run and do like nine jerks or something. But it was as many way. jerks as possible oh, right. in remaining time with yeah. like 135. And he just popped it up like jerk after jerk. And I watched, I think the Buttery Bros are with him. And I watched his training and stuff like that the other day. And I think he's quite underrated. He looks like quite a nice normal guy. He's just really good at CrossFit. And so I put him as four. Uh, so give me a third. Three. Mm. Patrick Vellner. Oh, hater. Because... <laughs> Because. <laughs> because he's gonna get cut. <laughs> He'll probably get cut after the first. Well, I feel like because it, if he doesn't bottle the first few days, at least he'll make it to the end. I put my number three. I've gone. I put Justin Medeiros mm. as number three. You're just, <laughs> you're just being controversial. I think. No, because not everyone is Matt Fraser. Not yeah. everyone is Rich Froning. Not everyone is Tia. I was actually yeah. gonna say that with the women. I was gonna say that I think the age of like people winning like years and years in a row, mm. like five for Matt Fraser, six for Tia. I think that's, yeah. I think it's over. I think that that was a time like when, I don't know, I just think that there are so many people now mm. who like Emma Carey, she came like, I don't know, like 1,100 and something one year and then the next year she was bloody 16th. I think there are people, like monstrous people who are just fit and strong, mm. who are hungry to win. I, I just think for anyone. not everyone is going to be win after win. Now. And I understand that Justin Medeiros is really good and that he's won the last two years and all that sort of thing. I just think it's not going to always be the same of when you have someone who wins two years in a row they're just gonna keep winning and winning and winning. Yeah. I just, well, I agree, I didn't put him in first. Yeah, I just, oh, spoilers. <laughs> I just don't think it's gonna happen. He came sixth in his semi finals. I don't really know if you can read into that. Some people will be say that he was just. Not peaked or. Yeah, that. training through it. So I think he's gonna do really well because he's got that dog mentality of, okay, he's in front of me. So I'm gonna, so I'm gonna pick up this bar and like lunge all the way part. That's literally what he about did to Ricky Garrard. Well, Ricky Garrard picked up the bar, front rack lunge with a axle bar, horrible. And Ricky put it down and Justin, he says on the, whatever I saw on the video clip, yeah. he was like, he put it down. So in my head I was like, okay, I'll just pick it up and I'll just keep going. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it hurts. It doesn't matter if I'm dying. I'll just keep going. So he'll finish up there, but I think he's in for a surprise. Okay, two. Number two, I put Roman Krennikov. You put Patrick Vellner as number one? I don't know. <laughs> okay, I put number two, Justin Medeiros. Oh, okay. Okay, who's your number one? No, Roman Krennikov is my number two first. Sorry, Roman Krennikov is your number two. Yeah, I, I love Roman Krennikov. Yeah. I think he's a Russian monster who knows nothing of how good he actually is mm. and will just push himself to the absolute limit to do his best, but I don't think he's gonna win. <laughs> 
Who's your number one then? Patrick Vellner. <laughs> <laughs> I love Patrick Vellner. He smashed the semi. Who's your number one? Roman Kronikov. Roman? Yeah. Oh, so I like that. Because I really like him and I think he's... I love watching videos of him and him and his family. And I feel like it means so much to him to even be out of the games. So mm. I think that... He has it to win. I think that he trains really hard. I think he loves what he does mm. and that he's gone through a lot to make it to the games. I think it's now he's allowed to live in the US and yeah. he gets to train with Rich Froning yeah. and all of those guys. And Man, it's just cool. And I would like for like an underdoggy type person to win. I also do think that it's cool that you put Patrick Vellner. Patrick Vellner is not gonna, he came sixth last year, right? But he's a consistent podium finisher. He's not going to fumble the first events of the games okay. this year. And he's not going to fumble the first events of the games. He said it in his like YouTube uh, video that I watched. He hasn't got many subscribers for some reason. So subscribe but to his channel. Subscribe you to Patrick Vellner. <laughs> um, I watch his videos because he said that he realised he's like one of the oldest guys there. He's got the most, probably the most experience. He smashed the semi-finals and looked like he was cruising through the semi-finals yeah. so and I just really like him I think he looks like a bit of a normal any guy who's just really fit he's got a cute kid he, has got he seems very very humble yeah. um, very nice man and I would just really love to see him win and I think if he does win I think he would stop so there are our predictions yeah don't forget to pop yours in the comment Bring it section home, below we'll yeah. post a review yeah. after the crossbow game so like a week from well probably monday blah, monday the 7th of august we'll post obviously a review about the crossbow games and talk about everything so if you do want to see that make sure you subscribe to my channel so let's give this video a big thumbs up so that we know that you did enjoy it and we'll catch you guys in the next video see you at the games